So if you want to know how to make this Meshtastic repeater, you're going to want to stay tuned because we're going to do a teardown. We're going to go over each one of the components and then we're going to show you how exactly it is that we made this. Now, this is nothing groundbreaking. Many people have been making these. We're just simply making a video and showing you all the different parts that you need. And we put it on an Amazon store so you could buy it all at one place. So we'll cover some background information right quick. This is simply a repeater device. Now it could be used as an end user device if you connect to it via Bluetooth with your phone, but it's not very practical because of the size. Instead, what most people are doing is using an end user device, kind of like this one right here. Uh, this antenna here, ZBM2 Industries, great guy, go buy his antennas. So this device is something somebody might carry around with them. This device right here, another thing that somebody might carry around with them, it actually has a screen and a keyboard and you don't actually need a phone. You can use a phone, but you don't need it. And then, of course, there are others. There's a plethora of different Meshtastic end-user devices that you can use. Of course, this typically begs the question, so what is Meshtastic anyways? I say it like this. Think walkie-texty instead of walkie-talkie. These are just small radio devices that can message between each other. So I type something on here, I connect my phone to this device, text it out, and I press send. This radio transceiver will then blast it out to other similar devices like you see here. Now when you bring a repeater into the mix, you have a higher gain antenna, you can fit a bigger battery in here, and this device can be left somewhere uh, in a high place unattended for a long time so that other smaller end user devices in the area can route their signals through the repeater for a broader coverage area. So that's a quick background on why you might want a repeater like this. So let's go ahead and get into it. So looking at the inside here, you'll notice that the battery is still plugged in. One important thing to know about Meshtastic devices is that anytime you're gonna be removing antennas or messing with peripherals, you're gonna to wanna to just go ahead and disconnect the power like such. So now we have power disconnected and we can start messing with things. So from top to bottom, we have the antenna here. We have an external power port right here with a nice little allegedly waterproof cap. We have a, a breather unit, so this allows for air to move in and out of the device. We have the external power cable connected to the device. One thing I should note here is that this device, or this, this cable rather, only passes power and not data. So that could be important for access. So if you keep it closed and it's locked up, I mean, I'm sure somebody could pick that, and break it very easily, but you know, let's pretend that it's impenetrable. Uh, they, if only using the power port, could not connect directly to data. Moving on, you see this little battery cable here. We'll get to the battery in a second, but uh, I'm sure you're interested in what is this shiny bag? This shiny bag is just, it's a fireproof bag that ensures that if your battery catches on fire, it's not going to, you know, burn down whatever telephone pole that you illegally put it on and uh, get you in big trouble. Now we can talk about the actual little radio chip here. There's some nuances here. I'm no computer engineer, but it's basically a radio chip on a board that has a connection point for different peripherals like this one right here. Uh, that's an antenna connection, IPEX, and then this one as well, IPEX. I think that's how you say it anyways. Um, so you can disconnect those pretty easily. They are pretty fragile, so you do have to be careful whenever you're connecting them. They come off very easily though. So this guy right here, this is a Bluetooth antenna that actually comes with the Meshtastic starter kits, the RAK wireless Meshtastic starter kits. What you can see here is a connector which goes from the radio chip to this antenna connector. So what we have here is an N-type bulkhead connector. It goes all the way through, it screws on here, and then this big antenna port is where I plug in this antenna. What you'll commonly see with these N-type antennas is much higher gain or outdoor application type antennas. Now that we have the antenna disconnected, we'll talk about it for a little bit. Uh, I kind of forget the stats. It might be 5.8 decibels or 5 decibels of gain or something like that. So 
It, this is a, a decent antenna. I bought it for, I think, $17. So really not a bad price for the form factor, for the performance. I'm pretty pleased with this antenna. Next, let's move in to the bag. So I'm sure this one's gonna cause some fits out there somewhere, but whatever. Here it is, 10,000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt battery. So this connector here is very important. This is a JST 2.0 connector. So that just means it's two millimeters across. So what you'll see is a ridge over here. And then if you're looking at it like this, the red is on the right of the ridge. And that is how you know that this is in the correct configuration to plug in to your board. The red wire should be on the inside. That's very important whenever it comes to uh, these mesh devices. You gotta make sure your polarity is correct. You could fry the chip very easily. So whenever you plug a battery in, that's just one thing to check. And always double check. Always look it up before you do it if you have any questions about it. This battery is pretty big for this application. So you don't really need a battery this big, especially if you have a solar panel connected. But the assumption with this repeater is that I don't have a solar panel and I don't wanna mess with a solar panel. So I just bought a big battery that can power this thing, in my experience, for about one month. Having a month of battery power gives you some time to kind of forget about it or uh, come back to it whenever is more convenient. And even if it dies, it's not a huge deal. You could just go scoop it up and charge it again. Luckily, you don't even have to bust it open. You could just plug it into the outside right there. Uh, this battery is maybe not what some people would choose, but the cool part here is that the connector is already attached. The wire is already in it, so it's very beginner friendly. You can put it directly into this little fireproof bag. You don't have to plug uh, 18650 batteries into uh, something that you need to solder or something that you need to uh, mess around too much with. So for that reason, I'd say this is pretty beginner friendly because you don't have to get wire cutters or wire st strippers, anything like that. You will need drill bits to drill these holes, but we'll get to that in a second. You might be wondering why silica gel beads have made it into this build kit. Well, the idea is that if any water does somehow seep in, even though this is technically IP67 rated, uh, you want at least some sort of protection, something to soak up all that wetness. So hopefully this would work. Maybe it doesn't, but it's a it's just one small protective measure. I do have these added on to the Amazon build list and the bag has like 15 of them. Honestly, you could just find one in a bag of beef jerky or some shit. Now for actually drilling the holes that you'll pass these things through, what you're gonna need is a three eighths, oops, uh, five eighths, five eighths inch drill bit uh, for the USB-C pass through and for the in type connector right here. And then for this little breather device, you'll need about one half. So one half and five eighths should do it for your drill bits. Actually installing these parts, really not that difficult. Uh, once you have the hole, you just take this guy, shove it through, and then screw these parts on. Same thing down here. The hardest part, and I say hard, it's really not that hard, is just getting these things lined up properly and then uh, clamping them down and keeping everything nice and parallel. Does it have any extra function? No. Does it look better? Yes. So I say just make it look real nice. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed watching me tear this down and explain all the different components. Hopefully this was informative for you. If you have any questions, please just put them in the comments and I can uh, try to answer as best as I can. I know that Meshtastic can be difficult to get into. It's not very straightforward and a lot of the resources seem to be kind of all over the place. Some of them are in forums, some of them are on like random GitHub pages or just some dude on Instagram who keeps on posting weird cryptic reels about Meshtastic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough to get into it. So we're actually making a guide right now on all the different aspects that go into Meshtastic. Is it, is it right for you? Is it something that you should consider for your preparedness communications? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's not always a perfect solution. But if you wanna keep on exploring that type of stuff, just keep following along and we'll do our best to give you as much information as we can. Thanks for watching guys.